Reactive Training Systems. In this episode of the RTS Podcast, Mike interviews IPF World Champions Troy and Laddie Gibson. Hey everyone, welcome back to the RTS Podcast. Uh, it's been a little while since we've got together for an episode, uh, so thanks for bearing with us through the break. Uh, but today we've got a really cool episode planned. Um, we've got uh, myself, I'm here, uh, Polly's here, and Mark Robb is here, who you all know. Uh, we've also got two uh, guests with us today. I'm really excited about talking to these guys. We've got Troy and Laddie Gibson Um the Gibson brothers. Uh, Troy is a 93 kilo Masters world champion and world record holder. And Laddie is an 83 kilo Masters world champion and world record holder. So uh, kind of a cool thing going on today. We've got four world record holders in one podcast. So that's pretty neat. Um, let's uh, start off talking to uh, Troy and Laddie. Uh, all right, guys. Um, just to kind of start off with some bio questions, I guess, get people to know you a little bit more. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves? Troy, why don't you start out for us? Um, where'd you grow up and stuff like that? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, we were, we were born, well, I, you know, I'll just say for myself, you know, but it's actually both of us. We were obviously born uh, with twins uh, for one thing. Uh, we were born in the Bronx, uh, but, you know, shortly thereafter, moved out to uh, Long Island, Suffolk County, uh, at an early age. Went to school out there. Uh, joined the military, got into the Marines, uh, and that's where you know I picked up uh, uh, powerlifting. You know, I saw a whole bunch of uh, big guys training at the gym out there. Um, everybody was you know mesmerized by what these guys were doing, and of course, I was impressed also. So shortly after I got out of the uh, Marines. Uh, I went into my first state meet in 1988. So cool. it was good we're, for us. I didn't know that you guys were in the Marines. Uh, were both of you in the Marines? Yes. Yeah, we were both uh, in the Marine Corps. We uh, we actually were never uh, stationed together, though we went through uh, boot camp initial training together. But uh, I think the closest we were ever was when uh, I was stationed in Okinawa, Japan, and, and uh, Troy was uh, uh, in mainland Japan. Oh, okay. All right. You know, okay. Yeah. So uh, I think one of the... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was, I was going to say, I think one of the things was, uh, you know, Laddie really wasn't initially into um, to powerlifting when we were in the Marines. Neither one of us actually powerlifted in the Marines. Laddie was more of uh, doing a lot of running because there's a... Obviously, a lot of calisthenics and and running, you know, when you're when you're in the military. Um, and I just, you know, went to the gym basically to to try to, you know, keep myself in shape. And like right. I said, I, you know, I used to see these guys lifting, you know, a lot of weight, and I, you know, became interested in it. And then, like I said, when we got out, you know, we, you know, went into our first state meet, and you know, fell in love after that. So, how did that so first state meet go? Like, were you guys pretty much talented from the beginning, or you know, well, that's you know, an interesting the, uh, question. It's like to find out like where great lifters started, you know? Yeah. Well, we were actually, uh, you know, we, we, we lived on Long Island. Our first, uh, meet was the, uh, 1988. Uh, it was, it was the USA, USA powerlifting meet, but it was called the, uh, you know, American drug free powerlifting association at the time. And, uh, it was up in Albany. I remember we, uh, we took, uh, it was us and, uh, and another friend of ours who also competed, we rode up to the up in, to Albany in a in a van, and I remember we stayed in in the van the uh, the night before the meet. <laughs> and then we didn't even, we didn't even use yeah. the uh, we didn't even have a hotel. We just stayed in the van and uh, <laughs> lifted the next uh, li lifted that next morning. And um, I actually um, you know we both won first place, and I and I got I got best lifter in that meet. And ever since then, I, you know I, I was hooked. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's very interesting. Troy was, uh, you know, did actually in the, in the Marine Corps, Troy did a, a bench press competition, I think, you know, just a little thing in the Marines back in like 1985. And then when, when we got out, when we got out of the Marines, I had a car and Troy didn't. So I used to drive him back and forth to the gym, but I was really 
uh, more of a runner type, more, doing more calisthenics, push-ups, pull-ups, and so on. And I just got tired of driving him back and forth to the gym. So that's when I decided, you know what, let me stay and work out with you. And, you know uh, <laughs> and that's how I started all of it. I have I have trouble imagining either one of you guys is like a runner type. You know, if you see either one of you, you're both just wide human beings. You know, you're very obviously built for for lifting weights. You know, uh, yeah, I have a hard time imagining you guys uh, running very much. But I mean, I guess uh, that happens though, right? I mean, you were in the Marines. I mean, I was in the Air Force. It, we we do run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do run. But you know, I mean, obviously, um, once we started the uh, once we started the you know the, the serious you know the powerlifting, all, all the running went out the window, <laughs> and uh, that's when we started to really put a little bit of size on. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you guys don't uh, still keep up with any of that stuff nowadays, do you? No, you know what? When we started um, when we started powerlifting, we. Uh, you know, we didn't do a lot of running. We, you know, we felt it would, you know, obviously take away from, you know, or possibly take away from some of our, uh, you know, some of our lifts. Uh, but one of the things we didn't, uh, we didn't do, you know, when we first started powerlifting was we didn't do a lot of mobility uh, stuff. And obviously that hurt us, you know, now, you know, because, you know, because of all the injuries we've had over the years. So, you know, if obviously if we could change something, go back, you know, going back, we would have probably done a little bit more of the, uh, you know, not, not necessarily full running, but uh, definitely some mobility stuff that would have helped us. Yeah. Have been just kind of keep up the general athleticism and stuff like that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So while you touched on that, um, what sorts of injuries have you guys had to deal with over the years? Uh, well, I've had, uh, Laddie had, uh, two knee surgeries. I, uh, tore my right patella tendon, uh, probably around ni 1995, uh, 96, somewhere around in there. And then about five years later, uh, I tore, uh, the meniscus in my right knee. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I've been dealing with, uh, shoulder impingement problems for, for 10 years off and on. And the last episode was probably about three weeks before the uh, uh, IPF uh, uh, Classic World Championships. And it was probably about four weeks out. I was really struggling. Um, I would probably wouldn't have gotten uh, three white lights with um, with three fifty three hundred fifty pounds. It was it was pretty bad. Okay. And then just for comparison, uh, what kind of numbers were you hitting in Finland? Uh, Prior, the, the training was, was absolutely great. Um, I had the, uh, I believe I was on track uh, to go uh, 402, maybe even 407 uh, with the training prior to uh, to uh, having a shoulder problem. So the training was, was excellent. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, it did affect you pretty dramatically. So what do oh, you yeah, do in yeah. a situation like that? Do you... Um, is there anything that you've kind of learned over the over the years that you can do to uh, make it go away a little faster or anything? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we uh, as soon as uh, as soon as I got the initial uh, injury, you know, the, it was one of those things where, and you know, every once in a while you get an injury like this where you don't exactly remember or or know how you. It wasn't a a distinctive thing that you did that caused the problem. So it was yeah. one of those things where, you know, how did this happen? You know, um, but, you know, I have a, uh, you know, a good orthopedic doctor, I have a good chiropractor. So, and, and based on that and physical therapy is basically what, what, what I did. Yeah. And, I, you know, this is Troy, I, I found out that, you know, obviously, I mean, I have quite a few injuries also. I've had, you know, the knee surgery. Um, I think we both have uh, partial tears to our rotator cuffs. Um you know, uh, what else? Yeah, like I said, the knee surgery, a couple in the past, some herniated disc in, in the back. But, you know, these things have, you know, over the years have seemed to heal from, you know, obviously doing, you know, getting a little bit more into the mobility, trying to work more around things, trying to let things heal, which is something when we first started, we used to never, um, you know, really do. Um, lead, leading into, you know, leading into this, you know, the, uh, the world for me, uh, when we started, you know, working with you in the beginning of the year, Mike, 
Um, I had a, I, I started out with uh, with a serious case of uh, tendonitis in my knee, which yeah. you know occurred right before the 2014 nationals, and I kind of you know got lazy, never really you know treated it. You know, I kind of just let myself go through the winter holidays without really doing much. And when I started to try to pick up the training, you know, the the, the knee was worse. It became you know uh, synovitis, and, and and then you know at the all kinds of problems with the knee, so um, I basically had to lay off and then try to work around it. But I was I was surprised. Luckily, before the uh, you know listening to you and trying to get everything together, I was able to put together a, a, you know a decent sized squat, a much better than I did even at the nationals PR. in 2014. Yeah, it's a PR for me, so I was yeah. happy with that. Yeah, very good. It was it was, it was good stuff. It was good stuff. It's um, sometimes we got to work around stuff like that, but. Mark, I heard you laughing. Um, I, I think uh, we know that you've got a, a thing or two to add as far as uh, dealing with nagging things. Uh, not quite injuries, but not not pain-free training either, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. I was just laughing at, you know, Troy's comment. I guess it was Troy. It was you, wasn't it, Troy? was talking about not backing off. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely me. Yeah, early on. So, uh, and I was just laughing because I remember a comment you made to me, Mike, years ago, you know, when I torn my bicep loose and I was, you know, whatever, I was lifting like 50 times as much as the doctor said I was supposed to. (laughs) You know, he said, you know, don't lift any more than 10 pounds with this arm. So I was doing 500 pound deadlifts and. The typical power lifter. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. I guess it takes some some maturity and wisdom to, you know, don't do that kind of stuff. Yeah, it definitely does. You know, and I mean, I hate to say that's one of those things that, that comes with uh, age and experience because kind of the whole thing, uh, you know, for me going back all the way to my academy days when I first started coaching, it's always been about how do I, you know, teach these guys who are you know, maybe have five or six years of experience to, to lift like a, a lifter with, you know, 15 or 20 years of experience, you know, to just to, to lift with that sort of sense of, of um, you know, sense of their own body and, you know, be able to understand those and read those signals, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, it's we try to speed up that process, but to some extent uh, there's How's the saying go? There's uh, no teacher like experience, right? Yeah, and it's like you gotta. I mean, we all, all of us, I'm sure. I mean, it's a common trait. We all tend to want to push things right to the limit, right to the edge. But you gotta learn where that edge is for you individually, because if you go over it, over that line, you're gonna get set back. Yeah. You know, it's going to take you longer. So it's kind of a kind of an individual thing, I think. Plus, like you said, experience. So, yeah, maybe a tough line to walk. Polly, what do you think? No, I'm just I'm just wondering, you know, so we're three out of three out of the four uh, world record holders here are our master lifters. And, um, I, you know, have you guys learned your lesson yet? Are you? <laughs> you know, you know, I mean, but that, it goes for it goes for all four of you. So so everybody's here is is spoken about all these um, all these all these injuries, all these um, these issues, and you know just everybody um, everybody just came off of uh, classic worlds. Um, you know what are you going to do differently going forward? What are you going to do to to prepare yourself and 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 be even healthier going in? And uh, set a good example for all the youngins. No, uh, this is Troy. It's, I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's that's a tough question. Yeah, it's a tough question. I mean, I know it's a tough question. <laughs> you know, it's um, you know, you, you know, always before you get injured, you know, the the training is going. Yeah, generally it's going well. You know, when 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 something bad happens, at least for me. You know, generally it's going bad. It's going good, and then you try to, you know, you say, "Man, this is this is going great. I'm pushing myself well," and uh, and then you know something happens. You know, you, you you know you get this little nagging thing or or an injury or something like that, and you try to, you know, you, you first first of all, you you never 
you know, at least with me, I never want to try to, you know, to stop completely, which is probably not the right thing to do, obviously. So I try to look for ways to, um, you know, work around it or try to help it heal fast. I, I've always had that problem with, you know, trying to trying to back off un, unless I absolutely know I have to. And um, that's that's just uh, that's the problem I have in my mind. Or, or, or if another lifter asks me and says, hey, listen. Um, I'm having a problem with this or whatever. I can give that person, you know, advice on, you know, hey, you know, maybe you should back off or try to do this or, you know, but basically let it rest. It'll heal. You, you'll have time. But when it comes to me, you know, it's, it's difficult. I have to generally hear it from my brother or someone else to tell me, yeah, you really need to back off. In my mind, I can't think about missing too many gym days. I don't like it. Yeah. I think that uh, this is Lighty. I think that's one of the good things that me and Troy both have. Uh, we're very good with being able to, to watch the other one and, and give sound advice to them, uh, better advice than we probably uh, would take ourselves. Uh, you know, I think we're both a little stubborn with that type of thing, but we'll listen to each other. Yeah, that, that's the same deal here, guys, too. I'm, you know, my, my training partner, uh, Chad Rexroad, I just realized that I'm too boneheaded to even make a good decision, so I just say to him, you know, hey, you, I need some coaching here. What should I do? And yeah. he'll say, stop now or whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. What, about, what about you, Mike? Um, I, I mean, since I end up training by myself a lot, um, I unfortunately don't have that um, – that benefit of having a, a consistent training partner, but that's something I'm working on as well. Um, in the meantime, it's just kind of, it's a lot like what Troy was saying when things are going good, uh, things will be going good. And, and that's uh, sometimes when you've got to watch out that uh, something might be uh, kind of creeping around the corner, but um, it's a tough line to walk because you don't want to pull the plug on those things too early you know, but at the same time, it's better to be a little bit early than too late, you know? Right. So when things are, yeah. are going really well, you know, normally you're making, you know, five pound jump here and there. Uh, but when those start to turn into 10 and 15 pound jumps, then you start going, Hmm. Okay. I mean, it's, it's a really hard thing to do. Like when you're really, uh, making a lot of progress really fast when you're riding that train, you know, that, uh, you want to just kind of stick with it. Well, a lot of times that's good and hang in there for a little bit, you know, but don't get stuck there, you know, and I've known coaches who've gone as far as to put like a percentage on it. You know, they don't want their lifters to gain more than X percent per year, you know, because they feel like if they gain faster than that, then that predisposes them for injury. I wouldn't quite go that far. I, I'm not sure that I could put a, a definite number on it, but yeah, I mean, kind of echoing the same sentiment. I'd, I'd rather, you know, and I've done that with a few lifters. You know, I've seen, like, hey, man, you're really getting a lot stronger really fast. Uh, we're going to take a deload week. And that's a hard sell. You know, you've got a lifter who's really motivated and, and they're having fun because getting stronger is fun. And now you're telling them <laughs> you're getting too strong. I'm going to pull the plug on things. So um, you've got to take some time and explain that to a lifter, I think. But um that's kind of the route that I'm trying to take. And it's a lot easier to say that than it is to do it. Uh, you know, I totally get that, but uh, it's something that we, we try to put into practice as much as we can basically. So, so basically it's, it's, I think everybody said it's all easier said than done. It's much easier to, than, <laughs> to dispense the <laughs> advice um, yeah. and to receive the advice. And the other thing is that you really have to have some trusted people around you just to kind of step step out of your emotions, step out of your ego, and just um, just tell it tell it like it is. Yeah, that's one thing that uh, that my wife asks me a lot of times too when I'm venting some of these problems and stuff like that. She'll she'll say, "What would you tell one of your athletes if they were in this situation?" And at first, my answer is like, "Ah, but this isn't them," you know. But that's actually a really good way to to frame the question, you know, and once I kind of let that sink in a little bit, that's a, that's a good way to think about yeah, it. Yeah, now we yeah. all have to follow that advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 like you said, it's very hard to follow, but it's, it's the right advice. Yeah. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to kind of 
change direction too much, but there's some other things that I wanted to hear from, uh, from Troy and Laddie. Um, you guys said that you, uh, did your first competition in 88. Uh, so you've been lifting for 17 plus years now. Um, a question a lot of guys have is how do you stay motivated to keep training and keep pursuing this hard for that long, you know, despite injuries and other setbacks, you know, it, it's fun getting stronger, but it's not always fun. Uh, so how have, have you stayed motivated this uh, throughout well, this time? Um, yeah, you know, yeah, we've gone back. Yeah, like I said, it was 1988. And, um, you know, from, you know, being, you know, with the, um, you know, our jobs, um, you know, still still being in the military. We got, you know, uh, Desert Storm came up after, after the 1988 meet. Um, we had a couple other, you know, things with, you know, with work, the, you know, the academy, a couple, two different academies, uh, actually four between us, four different police academies that we had to go through. So, you know, you, you, you tend to do a couple of meets and then you take time off, um, you know, then injuries come in. So, you know, I'd say it's, it, it, it's, you know, it's very difficult. I remember just, um, in early 2014 when we decided to do the, uh, the seminar that you guys held, Paulie and, and, and you know, and yourself over there in, in, yeah. in Brooklyn, uh, which was a great seminar. And when when we went to that initially, we went to that because we were kind of uh, we weren't motivated. We, we really weren't interested in doing you know and and getting back into uh, to powerlifting. You know, the seminar was great. We um, we came out of that with some you know real motivation to try to step up our game, and and I think that worked. You know, and we went into the nationals and. And, um, you know, got that fire back underneath us. But that was one of the things, you know, that kind of fired us up recently. Yeah. And, you know, every, every once in a while you come across something that really gives you a, a little bit of a boost to get going again. Right. Also, one of, one of the things that we, we both kind of like to uh, to look at is is by looking to see if uh, if we can produce a, a, a PR. You know, we, we love the sport of powerlifting. So, you know, the, the love is there for the sport. But we also try to challenge ourselves to see, you know, hey, listen, you know, I've done, you know, 370. I'm a year or two older. Hey, can I do 375? Can I do 380? Or can I get this American record or the world record? And uh, and then try to shoot for it. So it's it's basically the same thing. And that's this is something that I tell a lot of people that kind of ties together lifters of all levels. You know, whether we're talking to you guys who are world champions or, you know, you're talking to somebody who's only been lifting weights for six months you know everybody's really in pursuit of the same thing which is just an incremental improvement over what you did last time you know yeah. and no matter how long you've been lifting that's something that really ties all of us together yeah that's that's the key is is, is trying to and trying to continue to improve because you can't nobody uh, is going to continually win you know all, yeah. all the time you know what i mean you you do the, the only person you're really competing against is yourself so you yeah. really have to just continue to push yourself. That that's that's how you win. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh let's talk a little bit of training. Uh, listeners will get mad at us if we don't talk about training at all. Uh, <laughs> so um, why don't you guys describe a little bit about what your training's like now, and um, we'll just kind of take it from there. Uh, well, now we you know obviously we're. Uh, you know, we're working with you now, but right. we, uh, you know, we're doing a lot more of the, uh, you know, the RPE system. Believe it or not, we're doing uh, um, a lot less um, volume than we used to do. Um, believe it or not, before we didn't, you know, there was like there, there wasn't a stop button um, <laughs> on our uh, on our training. You know, we would just keep going because we had this this weird mentality that. Um, you know, well, if I can just do more, you know, one, one or two more sets, I'm going to get stronger by it. Not realizing that, you know, something, you, you know, you, you're breaking yourself down, yeah. but, um, you well, know, I, I, I like, you guys, then, uh, so you used to do even more work than you're doing now. Uh, was that more work in the, the main lifts, the competition lifts, or did you spend more time doing assistance work than, than you're doing now? No, we actually spent, we were uh, assistance heavy. We were uh, a lot more work on the assistance work we used to do in the past. Uh, 
now we're doing more of the actual power lifts and uh, I'm finding that that uh, definitely works best. You know, if you want to uh, increase your squat, squat. If you want to increase your bench, bench. And, uh, you know, I'm finding out that that's, uh, you know, after all these years of training, you know, uh, I'm finding out that that actually for us now is, works works better. Yeah, because if you think about it, when we first started, we, you know, we, we and, and up till recently, we, we were we would only squat once a week. We would only bench once a week and we would only deadlift once a week. And everything else was comprised of assistance work. And a lot of times that assistance work really didn't carry over to our main lifts, but we thought it did, you know, so we would, you know, we would continue more with more assistance work than the actual lift itself. And now we've learned that that's probably, you know, obviously not the, uh, the, the right call for us. So for you guys, for where, for where you were at the time, cause you know, as we've learned, everything is always context dependent. So where, for where you were at the time shifting from a program that was assistance heavy to something that was, uh, you know, had more emphasis on practicing the main lifts with a high frequency, uh, that's resulted in, in a nice improvement then. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think uh, this past training uh, for the for the worlds was I felt it was the best training uh, cycle I had done in in ten, ten years, maybe even longer. It was uh, it was uh, outstanding. You know, something that um, and I'll just kind of throw this out there. I really don't know uh, what you guys are going to say about this, but uh, some people seem to feel like if they can. Um, train the lifts with a higher frequency that actually ends up making their injuries feel better. Um, I mean, it's partly a combination of training while you're a little bit fatigued. So the weights aren't, you know, a hundred percent as heavy. Uh, and then you're kind of always a little bit warmed up, <laughs> you know, the movements yeah. are very refined and, and very well practiced. Um, have you guys felt that way at all or, uh, not really something that you've noticed very much? Well, I, I've noticed that doing the actual lifts, the actual three power lifts, have put more emphasis on them, has helped us to prevent injuries. I, we used to get injured mostly, believe it or not, doing a lot of assistance work. Uh, you know, we'd find out that a lot of the assistance work were, were the lifts that were actually causing us most of our problems. And now that we're focusing more on the actual power lifts, it, I think it's been helpful. Yeah, but as far as the frequency goes, um, uh, when we're, the, you know, if, if we're injured, um, the frequency, I'm, I'm not, so, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not so sure. I haven't really had time to really evaluate whether it would be, um, whether it would make the injury worse or not. But, um, you know, the frequency, the, the more frequency that we do, definitely, if I'm not injured, that definitely does help the lift. It definitely does help me. Uh, yeah, get for out. sure. For sure. And, and I think where I'm going with it is not really in dealing with an injury that you've got right now, but like, I know that some people, uh, you know, maybe they've got achy knees or something. It's, uh, for example, I knew a guy trained with a guy a, a few times, um, in North Dakota. Um, he's an older lifter. Um, he said that if he went for a week and didn't squat, then his knees would hurt. But as long as he squatted every week, then his knees felt fine. You know, you know, that's, it's interesting that you say that, um, you know, for, for years, you know, when uh, when we were doing the one, you know, squatting just once a week, I would get into the gym on, on, on squat day, which was Saturday for us. And uh, I would get in there and the first couple of sets. I mean, I mean, you're talking all, almost all my warm ups were, were painful, you know, to the point where because I have, you know, like the tendonitis in the knees. So, that, I mean, they, they were actually painful and it, it, it would take me a long time just to get warmed up enough to start moving up in weight. I've noticed since I squat more often, I don't have that problem. You know, I, my first, my, my, my first couple of warm up sets, I can get right down the depth. I don't have to start cutting them to try to, you know, get a little bit slower every time that I'm, uh, you know, that I start to feel warm enough. Yeah. So, so it definitely does matter that the frequency de definitely does help with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Paul, you've coached a lot of guys. Is that, been something that you've seen as well or absolutely just seeing the you know and and one of one of the things that I was 
that I that I do see is that when we increase frequency um, of the sport specific lifts and we minimize um, some of the assistance work, there's there's a bit of this kind of transition period. And uh, Troy and Laddie, did you guys find that there was that transition period where you're like, do I really have to squat this third time this week? Do I really <laughs> have to, you know, just kind of feeling that. And how long did it take you to kind of embrace it and feel like I can't wait to squat? the fourth time this week <laughs> well, you know it, it, it definitely uh it was definitely different obviously and it it definitely took a little bit of, it, it definitely took a little bit of getting used to uh you know obviously you know the, the the body starts to uh you know the body starts to you know cope with it and starts to starts to deal with it and then you know after a while you know three or four times of squatting a week is, is, is no longer a problem but in, in the beginning it was like wow this is uh you know is, you know, you 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 start to feel a little bit beat up, but um, but but then the body starts to catch up. Yeah, and, and then overall you feel better. Obviously. Yes, yeah, yeah, overall. The, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I could, um, you know, the, the the you know, like I said, the lifts went up, and uh, and I could go in on you know on a Saturday, you know, squat heavy on a Saturday, and then come right back on two or three days later, and then squat and be able to squat heavy again without any problem. So, yeah. Yeah. I think if, if I think if we were to go back to squatting and benching and deadlifting once a week, I, I really think our numbers would go down now. Yeah. It definitely feels different. Um, and yeah, I'm, I think there's some things that you can do to, to minimize that, uh, that decrease, you know, like it, for example, if we really increase the volume, um, I think that you would, see more of that strength retained. Um, but yeah, I think practicing the lifts at a high frequency, you get a lot of the neural adaptations and, and things like that. Um, you know, I, and like anything, you can take it too far, but, um, I don't, I don't think any of us are in danger of doing that, but I can kind of echo your sentiments, Polly. Like I remember when I first stepped into a higher frequency training, um, I was probably, well, I must have been in my early 20s uh, when I first started to do that. And it was, it was an adjustment even then. Um, I didn't make it the first time. I, would, I went to a higher frequency program. Um, I held on to it for about four weeks and, you know, I, I had to switch back, <laughs> you know. And uh, so I switched back to something a little lower frequency, held there for a few weeks and thought, you know, I'm going to try that again. You know, and, and each time I would try it, I could hang on a little bit longer Then it was maybe six weeks or eight weeks. And then, you know, by the time you can make it eight weeks, then you can pretty much make it, you know. Um, so that so was that was my experience. Couple, you know, I needed yeah. to kind of step into it as well. You just needed a few um, a few deloads in there just so you can get your head around it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it was uh, really different. And at the time. Um, so high frequency training is way more popular now than it was then, you know, and, uh, so you've got the psychological component as well, you know, so what I knew at the time were there was, there were these, uh, Chico programs floating around, uh, and they were high frequency and those guys were really strong, but pretty much everybody else said, nah, you can't do that. You're going to overtrain and all this stuff, you know, well, I didn't believe that, but at the same time, you don't know. And well, do you know anybody who's done it? Well, no, I didn't really know anybody at the time who, who'd done it, you know, but you just try it and, and that one worked out, you know? Uh, but now of course, high frequency training is a lot more popular and, and I think it's a lot easier to get your belief behind it now because there's so many people, you know, all ages, all weight classes and everything, uh, that have employed it successfully, you know, um, it's even getting to the point where, you know, and just kind of taking a step back and looking at larger trends in powerlifting, it's almost like we need to remember that, you know, high frequency training isn't the only way, you know, uh, it's not like, um, it's not like you have to squat five or six days a week to see progress. You know, uh, I don't think any of my lifters squat that frequently. Like we, a lot of them do two, uh, a lot of them do three times a week squatting. Some people deadlift once a week, some people deadlift twice a week, you know, so that's higher frequency than, uh, than it would have been, you know, 10 years ago. Um, but 
I still don't think that, you know, you need to take high frequency to its logical conclusion or anything like that, you know. It's just complete and utter failure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we're all, it seems like we're, everybody wants to see where that ends. Um, just just like uh, Troy and Laddie were saying that, you know, hey, if, if, if three sets are making me stronger, then why not do 18 sets? Because <laughs> then, I'll get, then I'll get really strong. But there is this, so I think we've seen some logical conclusions to this, but it's, uh, you know, I don't think our minds really allow us to remember, like, right. the failures in that way. I think we're starting to see, like, in terms of, like, popular trends and powerlifting training, I think we're starting to see things swing back the other direction. I, I think it'll kind of go back to a two times a week upper-lower split uh, before too long. You know, that's just kind of my, you know, my two cents on, you know, trends and powerlifting training, I guess. But, uh, and I think there's a there's a time and place for that. Uh, it's probably not in your meat prep training when you're, really trying to refine those, uh, the, those, uh, uh, neural patterns and things like that. But, um, yeah, time and place for, for a lot of different training methods. I think that's kind of the big takeaway. So, all right. I kind of got, <laughs> kind of got off track again, uh, from talking to, to Troy and Laddie, but, uh, um, is there anything else that you guys wanted to, to talk about? Or, I mean, we've got you here. Um, you want to bend my ear on something? Anything else that you wanted to cover? No. No, pretty well set. No, yeah, um, no, I think we, uh, yeah, we covered. You yeah, know, we pretty much touched on a lot. Touched on most of the stuff we had. I, I can't think of any. Sure, I, sure. Uh, well, nice. well, are we uh, gonna just are we gonna see Troy and Laddie at um at Raw Nationals? Are you guys gonna be there? Yeah, well, we're we're actually training for it now. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, our, our intention is definitely to uh, to enter. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we, we, you know, it's just basically in the in the beginning phases of, uh, of of you know starting to you know to pick up heavy on it. But yeah, we, our intention is definitely to uh, to enter. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be there. Um, Paul, you'll be there. Mark, unfortunately, we won't get to see you there uh, this year, but, uh, yeah, you'll be at the next one, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, um, yeah, well, just wanted to say thanks, uh, Troy and Laddie, for coming hanging out with us, um, sharing your experiences. Congratulations again on your performances in Finland. We didn't even really talk about uh, Finland all that much, but um, you guys did awesome, like we mentioned at the beginning. Uh, both gold medalists, both world record holders. Um, I mean, to say that that's awesome, I don't think really does it justice. I think we almost get desensitized to to how impressive it is to to be an actual legit world champion, like no kidding world champion in powerlifting. Um, I think we get des- desensitized to that a bit. So um, I just want to say uh, congratulations again for that. And uh, that's really a, a, an awesome achievement, a very commendable achievement. Um, yeah, thanks, guys, for hanging out with us. Uh, and everybody who's um, listening or watching on any of the various channels that, we've, that we'll put this out through, um, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, if you have any comments or anything, uh, please send those in. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you want to uh, have any requests in terms of people that you want to hear on the podcast or uh, topics that you want us to cover. Let us know that stuff too. Um, as always, just thanks for watching. Um, take what's there in your training, build some momentum and we'll see you next time.